Hi everyone, long time no see. I'm Napoleon, the Solution Engineer at DJI Enterprise. In the previous video, you learned how to plan missions using the FlyHub 2. Next, we will introduce the features related to the remote operation. FlyHub 2 provides map task area for DJI drones to ensure flight safety. Task plan library that enables the DJI Docs series to autonomously operational tasks. And virtual cockpit for remote drone control to meet the flexible operational needs. In custom flight areas, you can set the task area or no flight zone for the dock series or the new matrix series to ensure the flight safety or comply with the local regulations. You can also set the no landing zones and synchronize the obstacle data from the surrounding environment to ensure the flight safety. Open DJI Flight Hub 2, enter the project and click the map task area on the left. Then choose custom flight area. The green task area means the drone can only fly within this area. The effective area will shrink inward by 10 meters from the edge as a buffer. The drone cannot take off outside this area. The red geo zone means the drone is not allowed to enter this area. The effective area will extend outward by 10 meters from the edge as a buffer. The drone cannot take off inside this area. Setting the flight area and the geo zone is very simple. Select the polygon or circle from the right side and the joint on the map as needed. When you finish drawing the polygon, remember to click the check mark again. For a circle area, the minimum radius is 10 meters. If you have a DJI Dock series in your project, make sure it's within the task area and not covered by the geo zone. Some areas may be suitable for drones to operate in the air, but not suitable as landing zones, such as highways. In this case, you can set up a no landing zone. Currently, the no landing zone is only support the rectangles. Draw the center line along the road, and after clicking the check mark to confirm, you can set the total width in the parameters on the right. You can also right click on the line annotation and convert it into a no landing zone. Next, let's introduce the obstacle data function. Although visual cameras are integrated on the aircraft, we still want to operate safely in low visibility conditions or even at night. In this case, the obstacle data function distributes the terrain data to the aircraft, which is used to automatically avoid obstacles when planning routes with fly to or return to home. By default, obstacle data is a global elevation map centered around the dock within the 40 by 40 kilometers area. You can also add a 2.5D and a 3D model from the project to reflect the more realistic obstacle information. Click Update Data to confirm the new models have been added. Then click Update and then wait for the upload to be completed. Task Plan Library Efficient task planning is crucial for dock operations. Let's explore the key settings here. Click the Task Plan Library. The library stores the pre-planned task for DJI Doc series, enabling recurring missions like inspections or mapping missions. Click Create Plan to create a new plan. Select the task to execute and the dock device to be used. If the dock 3 task you select includes the AI warning notification, you can configure the related settings here. For the notification method, you can choose web or email notifications. If the organization has configured a webhook URL, you can also select webhook. You can adjust the frequency as needed to avoid the frequent notifications in a short period. Subscribers must be in the same project and fill in their email address in their user center to receive the email. About the positioning accuracy, you can select RTK for a high accuracy mapping mission, or you can select GNSS when relatively low accuracy is acceptable such as a general patrol task. Plan timer is crucial. First, immediate means the aircraft will immediately run the task right after the plan is created and only once. Timed, timed means this task will be executed once at the specific time. Three, recurring means the task will be executed at regular intervals within this specific time range. The frequency unit can be selected as day, week, or month. For example, 10 a.m. every day, 
if you want the dog to execute the route at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. every day, you need to create two separate recurring tasks, one for 10 a.m. daily and the other one for 11 a.m. daily. Four, continuous means that within this time period, the dog will repeatedly execute the selected task as long as the power requirements are met. You can set the required battery percentage between 50 and 100%. It is mainly used in high frequency patrol scenarios, such as continuous patrol tasks at night. Regarding the optimal return to home route planning, it is usually recommended to enable it to improve efficiency as the aircraft will plan the optimal flight path. However, if there are obstacles such as power lines or towers along the flight path that the vision system cannot avoid, it is recommended to disable this feature to ensure the flight safety. Regarding the signal loss action during flight, it is recommended to use return to home to ensure the flight safety. In special cases, you may choose continue, such as when a small part of the mission path is beyond the signal range. But the tests have shown that the aircraft can complete the mission and return safely. Please choose carefully. If a task cannot be completed within a single flight, a new task will automatically be created when you turn on the resume flight from the breakpoint. Once the aircraft is fully charged, it will resume the flight from the breakpoint and continue the mission. Multi-dock operations. You can use the multi-dock function to have the dock take off from dock A and the land at dock B after completing its task, enabling a larger operational coverage area, such as for a long distance inspection task. Dock 2 and dock 3 support this function. Select multi-dock in task type and choose the corresponding dock for takeoff and landing. It should be noted that before executing the task, the Flight Hub 2 will check whether the landing dock is empty. If there's a drone in the landing dock, the task will be aborted. Have you ever thought about using a mouse and keyboard to control a drone remotely? Meet Virtual Cockpit, DJI's game-changing feature that puts you inside a simulated cockpit. For the DJI Dock series, remote real-time control of the drone plays an essential role in responding to emergencies. For non-dock series drones, experienced pilots can also remotely operate the drones for tasks. It's easy to enter Virtual Cockpit. Open the Team tab and click Virtual Cockpit in the Device page. It will open a separate tab. You can see the live stream view on the right. The status bar at the top indicates some key status like network latency and signal level. Network latency is crucial for the virtual cockpit as it may be affected by network bandwidth and the video transmission signal. On the left side of the screen is the map where you can view the locations of the device and quickly perform point, line, and area measurements. The operation method is the same as in the main page. At the bottom of the screen is the aircraft status information. The left sides display the battery level and remaining flight time. The center shows the obstacle information as well as key data such as speed and altitude. The right side displays basic control buttons such as RTH and emergency landing. You can click the top right corner to view the keyboard shortcut keys. After the drone takes off, you can use these keys to control the drone's movement, just like using two joysticks on the RC. Note that since the keys can only detect whether they are pressed and cannot adjust the speed like joysticks, you need to use the X key to switch between different speeds as needed. You can easily let the drone fly to a target point, right-click on the blank area of the map, or on a pinpoint, then select Fly to. You have multiple ways to control the gimbal's movement. If permissions is not granted, you can click the top to obtain it. You can use the keyboard arrows keys to control the gimbal, or you can press the V key to enable the gimbal follow mode, or you can double click to look at the target. You can easily take a photo or video by clicking the icon, or use the F key and R keys. Use one, two, and three keys to switch between the wide, zoom, and thermal cameras. Use the mouse scroll to zoom in and zoom out. For advanced camera settings, 
you can click here to open the setting page. You can also use smart features just like in the RC. For example, T for pinpoint, G for smart chat, B for AI recognition. Recently, Virtual Cockpit has supported the AI object detection. You can describe the target you want to search for using a natural language or upload the target photo. FlyHub 2 will automatically convert it into a target text and the search in the current live stream view. If the target is found, the system will issue a warning. That's all for this video. Make sure to check the next FlyHub 2 video. See you soon.